Tonight's top European Union stories from the Unit UK include What has the European Union done for us? The medical experts who refuse to use low energy light bulbs in their homes and Britain will not stop EU migrants coming here to work, says Cameron. Cyprus is worse off after European Union accession, plus young EU members celebrate a decade in the rich club. With only just a few days left to go until polling day, if ever there was a moment to ramp up the activity around our film Betrayed, then today is that day. The political machine and its media propaganda is cranking out the naysaying, neoliberal, multi-culty, politically correct tittle-tattle, driving hard to deceive and distract the wider public from the truth and the facts. But the facts speak louder than the crock of mass media horse manure. The UK people have no control over fishing, farming, immigration. That's a fact. The UK taxpaying public are not allowed to invest in public infrastructure such as postal services, rail services, energy production, health services. Fact. All UK governments and political parties are obligated to hide from the British people the true nature and power of the European Union. Fact. The European Union was constructed so as to guide the people of all member nations to a single federal superstate without them ever knowing what was going on until it was too late. Fact. Folks, it's Monday the 19th of May. Great to have you joining me today. I'm Rick Timmis and this is the Unit Nightly News. First up, the hot story from our website, theunituk.com. What has the European Union done for us? As France's most expensive ever motorway, it is perhaps gratifying to know that the view from its carriageways will at least be magnifique. Built on high-rise columns that will soar out of the sea, it will wind its way past eight miles of stunning coastline with pristine white beaches and azure waters. The cost, a mere £1.3 billion, or £110,000 pounds per metre, of which a large chunk is expected to come from the European Union coffers. The real shock for the average EU taxpayer, however, is in the location, not the bill. This route is not some kind of project for the French Riviera, skirting Cap Ney or Nice. Instead, it is for the island of Reunion, a tiny French territory some 6,000 miles away off the coast of Madagascar, deep in the Indian Ocean. The exact spending plans for the motorway have yet to be finalised, but if and when it goes ahead, it will not be the first time that the EU has been generous to the island. Over the past six years, it has received some £800 million from the European Regional Development Fund, a huge pot of Brussels cash that is earmarked for helping out backward and remote zones of the EU and its territories. £160 million of that has already been spent on a network of roads and bridges through Reunion's mountainous inland, which has won awards for its elegant designs. But at a time when the EU has faced its toughest ever financial crisis, the question invariably arises, is this the best use of EU cash? Now, this article is a stunner, and it demonstrates the megalomaniacal madness of the kleptocrats in Brussels. The links to the article are below. Take a look for yourself. You'll be gobsmacked. The medical experts who refuse to use low-energy light bulbs in their homes. How would you view a man who's stockpiled a lifetime supply of old-fashioned light bulbs because he believes low-energy light bulbs could lead to blindness? <laughs> well, you might well dismiss him as dotty, but the man in question, John Marshall, is no crank. In fact, he's one of Britain's most eminent eye experts, the Professor of Ophthalmology at the University College London Institute of Ophthalmology, so concerned is he that he has boxes stacked with old-fashioned incandescent light bulbs at home. I bought, bought incandescent light bulbs before the government made it illegal to import them, he says. I can't give you an exact number, but I have enough to see me out. 
nor is he alone in his concerns about modern light bulbs. Another eminent pro British professor, John Hawke, an expert in skin disease, is warning that they may cause sunburn-like damage, premature aging, and even skin cancer. He doesn't have a low-energy light bulb in his house, explaining, I have lots of old-style bulbs I bought in bulk when they were available. Incandescent bulbs have been the standard form of illumination for more than a century, but following an EU directive, the government banned the import of 100-watt bulbs from 2009. This was followed by a ban on 60-watt bulbs in 2011, and a full ban on all traditional bulbs in 2012. Now, the concern is about some of the light rays emitted in high levels by these bulbs, says Professor Marshall. Recent scientific evidence shows that these specific rays are particularly damaging to the human eyes and skin. Uh, personally, I think this is a very important article to read. It goes into the detail of what the risks are and provides a background of information that every consumer needs to be aware of. Britain will not stop EU migrants coming here to work, says Cameron. Britain will not put up the barriers to stop migrants from other countries in the European Union coming here to work, David Cameron has said. The Prime Minister said the EU rules allowing people to move freely between countries are important and will remain in place, despite controversy over the immigration that they allow. Mr Cameron said that he rejected calls from the UK Independence Party to pull out of the EU and abandon European new rules. Mr Cameron said that he rejected calls from the UK Independence Party to pull out of the EU and abandon European rules that allow citizens of member states to work in other EU countries without restriction. Those rules have allowed more than one million EU nationals to come to Britain in recent years, with more than 150,000 arriving last year. Official figures this week are expected to show that at least another 30,000 Bulgarians and Romanians have come to Britain since restrictions on their entry lapsed in January. OK, so the figures for migration are likely up to date as of quarter one 2014. So that's a rate of 10,000 per month, and that's only Romania and Bulgaria. Watching Master Dimbleby on Question Time this week, the teachers on the show were at the point of tears with their frustration with Michael Gove. They already made the point that there are not enough primary school places, and we reported last September that the intake for that term was massively oversubscribed, with 3,000 children not getting places. And with a population heading at full tilt towards 70 plus million people, we can't teach all these people, we can't support them with health care. Yikes, without the massive importation of food, our cap-devastated agriculture can't even feed them. Now think about it for one second. Oil has sat resolutely at $100 a barrel since 2007, and it ain't ever coming down again, because there isn't enough of it. Now that means moving anything around i.e. food from abroad, has a transport cost five times that of 2005, and the only direction for that cost is up. You don't even need the back of an envelope to do the work on the maths. Any year two primary school child, well, one that can get a place, can do the numbers. Cyprus worse off after EU accession. Cyprus has been a clear loser of EU membership, according to the comparative report by The Economist. The influential publication looked at how the 10 EU member states that joined the bloc as part of the Big Bang enlargement in 2004 have fared in the last decade. In 2004, the EU went from being a club of 15 members to 25, taking in eight former Warsaw Pact countries and the small Mediterranean island states of Malta and Cyprus. Now, according to a comparative look at GDP per person for each country in 2004 and 2014, Cyprus came out the clear loser of the pack since EU membership. Cypriots have actually become less well-off, suffering a 13% decline in living standards since 2004, said The Economist. Of course, we all still remember the Cypriot bail-ins, but do you recall precisely how that was orchestrated? So, with the EU troika holding the Cypriot finance minister's nuts in a vice, introduce into law a new tax on savers. Now, this new law made every saver with over €100,000 liable for the tax. Then they simply took the money from their bank accounts. 
Now, not every country can do that because you need laws in place that give the government the power to directly take outstanding taxes from the people's bank accounts. I find it most interesting that the UK government has just given itself such powers. Young EU members celebrate decade in the rich club. Now it's been a time of monumental change for several former Soviet satellite states that joined the European Union 10 years ago. Open markets and the free movement of people has spurred economic growth that at times dwarfed worldwide trends. The goods they produced reached millions of new consumers, but it also left some feeling they threw away the yoke of an overbearing Moscow for an unaccountable Brussels. On May 1st, 2004, in its biggest single expansion, the EU took in 10 countries with some 74 million people. Seven entrants were either one-time Soviet republics or once part of the Warsaw Pact, the Czech Republic, Estonia, Hungary, Latvia, Lithuania, Poland and Slovakia. The others were Malta, Cyprus and Slovenia. In countries like Poland, a decade in one of the world's most exclusive clubs has brought galloping growth, even at a time when many other parts of the European Union were beset by a crippling financial crisis. Poland and other countries in the region seized this chance offered to them by history and used it well. Polish Prime Minister Donald Tusk said earlier this week as he presented a report on his country's decade in the EU. Now, EU accession, the report said, helped Poland increase exports to EU partners, brought funds to help modernise roads, bridges, railways and wastewater treatment, and gave greater access for Poles to schools and jobs in more developed countries to the West. My country, the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, is about to lose its sovereignty. It's now controlled not by an occupying army, but by an undemocratic bureaucracy established to eliminate independent European nation states. Incredible as it may sound, over the past half century, British politicians have given away control of Britain to a collection of unelected, unaccountable, and in large part unknown foreign bureaucrats who meet in secret and create laws which must be obeyed. Westminster, the mother of parliaments, is increasingly meaningless. Almost all power has been drained away to be replaced by a Brussels-based oligarchy. The British people are now within a heartbeat of losing their freedom, their way of life, their national identity, their currency, their right to self-government and their nation. The very fabric of Britain is being dismembered, its uniqueness destroyed. And all this has happened without either the consent or the knowledge of the people themselves. You don't believe me? Watch and discover how democratic Britain has been deconstructed. Now remember to visit our website, theunituk.com, for all the very latest news. You can find our page on Facebook by searching for The Unit UK, all one word. Join our community on Google+, Plus, where you can interact with us, voice your opinions and post comments about our stories and even get involved in the shows. And for all the latest tweets as they happen, then follow us on Twitter, at The E Unit. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for The Unit, Nightly News. I'll see you soon.